Hey, Jody here. Today I'm gonna to test some AC waveforms. Some of the newer inverter machines come with different AC waveforms like advanced square, soft square, sine wave, triangle wave. What do they do? Uh, do they help? Do they penetrate more? Do they help with thin metal? Do they help with thick metal? Or is it just a matter of personal preference? Today I'm gonna to try to add to the conversation because I'm gonna set up a turntable, stationary torch to get me out of the equation. No filler metal. Uh, same temperature, same amperage, and all that. I'm going to try these different waveforms and see how they do. I'm going to be using this Miller Dynasty 280 first, and I'm going to access the advanced functions by pressing these two buttons. It'll take me into a hidden menu, and that lets me find, find the waveforms. Advanced square, soft square, and then sine wave, and the last one is triangle wave. I'm going to keep them all in that order. I'm going to keep it, everything at 175 amps. And then also I'm going to keep the cleaning action the same across the board at 30% cleaning or 70% EN. And then AC frequency, which is also adjustable here, I'm going to keep on 100 hertz. I scribed a hash mark down there and I'm going to make the cut the same distance from the start every time so it doesn't have a chance to heat up and change the results. Up first is advanced square wave that's depicted something like this where each vertical line is it changing from negative to positive and then it, it, this, the squared off uh, tops and bottoms there that means it's just square wave advanced square wave so there's nothing funky going on there and from left to right that's time this would represent a fraction of a second I've got the tungsten set about one electrode diameter. I've got it prepped with a little bit of a taper on it and it's going to round a little bit. I'm going to try to keep everything the same. The tip is maintaining its shape pretty good. It's, it's the very sharp tip is rounded a little bit. Uh, typically things change a little bit. You get little misshaped tips with these new inverter machines with higher frequencies even though this is only 100 Hertz. But that's the first bead. Again, advanced square wave. I weld it halfway around, and I let it let the piece cool completely each time. And then I start at the same starting point each time, and then I'm going to cut it the same distance from the start point each time. We're going to do the same thing now with soft square wave, and it's depicted like this have no idea what that really means other than you know when it shoots up to the, to the positive from negative it has a little crown on it so it's supposed to sort of give you a little bit softer art characteristic that's why we're testing it see kind of see what it does to be honest I couldn't tell a whole lot of difference give it just a second to stabilize before I start the positioner here and I don't want to allow it to build up any heat falsely to skew the results but in retrospect, in hindsight, I, I probably should have changed the electrode out each time just to make sure it was the same, but you know, after that first initial light up where the tip rounds off, they're pretty pretty similar from, from waveform to waveform. Alright, that's enough of that. All right, we're going to take a look at sine wave now. That sine wave is old school. That's your older transformer machines way back when, before square wave came along. That's the old, you know, Miller dial arc or, or the old uh, big Miller uh, ABP, 330 ABP, or the old NCG machines or, you know, really old. And, and a lot of people still like this and still do great work with it. It's depicted like this, on a, you know, again, whatever that means. We'll light up and take a look at it. I find it interesting that, that they included it on these newer inverters, and I suspect the reason they did is they wanted to head off you know, a little resistance from the old timers adopting the new waveforms. And if a guy was accustomed to his old machine and, and liked it and could make things happen with it, uh, they still wanted him using the newer machine, so they give him this option, the sine wave option. That's my theory, anyway. Looks fine to me. Last thing we're going to test here before we get on the advanced pulse is triangle wave. 
and that's depicted like this. Now, with straight argon, it seems to be good for thin sheet metal, thin aluminum, but with a little helium added, like a lot of helium added, actually 80%, it seems to be good for puddling something really quickly if you need to get in and get out. That's been my, my experience with it anyway. But right here, it doesn't look like a whole lot different than anything else we're doing. It does, just kind of looking at it, it does seem to have a depression in the middle of the puddle. Like there's, maybe there's a little more uh, forcefulness to the arc. I don't know. It could just be, could just be me. But at the, at the very end of this puddle, it did seem to have a little deeper crater than the others. All right, let's take a look now. The crater seems a little deeper. Nice little crater crack in there too, which is to be expected when you're not using filler metal on aluminum like this. Just doing some testing though. Now before we before we slice and dice these and check for penetration, I got one more thing that we want to test alongside these, and that is advanced AC pulse, also called mixed TIG by some companies, where a, a DC current is pulsed along with an AC current. All right, before we get into the advanced pulse TIG because it alternates between DC and AC. I got to do a little review here. Uh, a few years back I did a video explaining AC balance. So I'm going to do a little brief version of that today. So bear with me for about two minutes here. This is a little review. TIG welding. Mm -mm. Almost all TIG welding on carbon steel, stainless steel, nickel alloys, titanium, etc. is done on DC EN, electrode negative, also called straight polarity. When you're on straight polarity, when you're on electrode negative, your di direction of your welding current is coming out of the torch like a water hose, out of that electrode into your metal workpiece, and that and your heat goes there, not up through your electrode. So you're able to sharpen your electrode and pinpoint the heat, and that's a really good thing. Now, electrode positive is the opposite of that. They call it reverse polarity. Electrode positive, DC EP, reverse polarity, all the same thing. When that Current is go and, and when the current is electrode positive, your your elect uh, welding current flows up like a vacuum cleaner up through the electrode, and a lot of the heat goes through the electrode and it balls up immediately. It just gets hot and melts on the tip. Not used much for TIG welding, hardly at all. In fact, um, back in the day, I remember reading some papers of there were some repairs on magnesium castings where they use helium and argon and reverse polarity. I actually, done a little bit of that, and it works okay, but. I don't think it works as good as alternating current. It's limited in its use. It's not used much at all. Uh, you get something when you're on electrode positive called the cleaning action. I won't go into the physics of it, but it's basically just like a little sandblasting operation that breaks up the aluminum oxide that's on the surface of all aluminum. And if you don't break up that oxide, it's kind of like, it just swells like scum. So the oxide on aluminum melts at roughly three times the temperature that the pure aluminum itself melts at. So if you don't have something breaking up that oxide on the surface, you got problems. You won't, you won't have a clean, shiny, wet puddle at all. Alternating current. What's that? Well, it's a, that's a EP and EN alternating back and forth rapidly. So you get kind of a little mixture. You get the best of both worlds. You get some penetration, some heat input into the workpiece. You get some cleaning action, but not too much. Your electrode doesn't get too hot. You know it will ball up a little bit, even on AC, but it doesn't get too hot. Now it's manageable. Now you can you know, weld uh, eighth, inch, uh, eighth inch thick aluminum with a 332nd electrode, even with a little taper on it, and it works pretty good. Now, if you get your penetration and your heat input from the EN, from the electrode negative portion where the heat is going into your workpiece and you have a pulse feature that alternates between DC EN and alternating current. Your alternating current's already alternating DC and AC, but now you have a little pulse feature that you're putting in a little bit more ha on half of that cycle. Would that be a good thing for welding on thick aluminum? <laughs> well, we are about to find out. 175 amps, pulse time on 50%. Pulse amps, that's the DC side. I want as much heat input as I can there. I want the same amperage, 100% there. Pulse frequency, going up to two pulses a second here. AC frequency, 100. AC balance, 
30, that's 30, that's the same as the, the Dynasty. And if I want to save this program here, I press this and hold it. And now that's my program one. That's an unusual sound because when it kicks over to DC, it's really not making any sound hardly at all. Again, I'm using a number eight gas lens here. It really seems to prefer a gas lens. And you can already tell that, that this is going to be a hotter, deeper penetrating weld just from the looks of it than the other with strictly using the waveform. So we're going to find out for sure. Metabo 6 inch. I put a little Irish spring bar soap when I'm cutting aluminum. Just keep that wheel from loading up. Didn't really read on whether the wheel was designed for aluminum or not, but I know that, you know, it smells good anyway. Now there's a, there is a more practical reason for using bar soap, whether it's Irish Spring or what. It, it, it tends to be able to wash off the part uh, thoroughly if you want to get your parts completely cleaned, you know, for welding later or something. A little quick polish with some Scotch-Brite, and then I got it as good a polish as I could, but not a great polish, but I labeled everything. Starting at one, two, three, four, five. So you know, advanced square first, just like keeping everything in order. And just going to run them by you here. There's not like night and day between those four. Got a little tiny pore in one of them, but they're all very similar in the in the way that they penetrated, except for the last one. Now that's one of these things does not look like the other. That's pretty crazy. That's some crazy penetration, all at 175 amps. So let's see how that applies to manual welding with using filler. Now I'm using 4943 filler for this because that's what I had 1 8 filler in. I like that filler, by the way. It's sort of almost the new 4043. It's like a replacement. But I'm, I got it on two pulses a second. All the settings are the same. I did bump it up to 200 amps here. That's probably what I would do, you know, welding a quarter inch lap joint like this. But I'm dipping rod every other pulse just about. I haven't really experimented with higher pulse rates. It only goes up to 10 pulses per second on this particular pulse function, but the results so far are pretty promising. Here's the cut and etch. Nothing like a cut and etch to show the results. Okay, so the waveforms. There were subtle differences. Uh, you know, I tend to settle in on advanced square when I'm, when I'm just doing projects. I get a, a repair to do or something like that. And the reason is a lot of times I'm using a 200 amp machine and I just tend to get, it just seems like I can get more heat out of the advanced square waveform than the others. Uh, occasionally I'll use triangle on thin, thin aluminum sheet metal, but I, I kind of just default to the advanced square. And you saw the differences were minimal. They were subtle uh, in the penetration depth and the, and the profiles. So, uh, you know, is it something that you, you got to have? I don't really know the answer to that. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm putting, putting out some information. A lot of people ask, should I upgrade to an inverter machine? They hear all about all these different waveforms that can do all this. Uh, there are certain specific applications where each one of those kind of would come into play maybe, but more than likely you could get the job done if you just had square wave or even just an AC machine with old sine wave. You know, a lot of it, a lot of it depends on what's behind the helmet. That's for sure. Um, none of those things turned my head until I got to the AC advanced pulse thing, and that's kind of a head turner. When you see almost penetrating all the way through something that the other waveforms at 175 amps just scratch the surface on, that's got to get your attention a little bit. So anyway, I intended this to be sort of educational. That's why I went through the polarity difference on TIG and the AC-DC and the DCEP, DCEN, and how all that works. I could make this a two hour long video. You may have noticed I kind of like talking about this stuff. Um, just a reminder, I do talk about it every week on a podcast, Welding Tips and Tricks Podcast. Myself, Roy Crumrine, Jonathan Lewis. You can find it on iTunes. You can find it on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Libsyn, probably a few other places. If you got a long commute and you want to learn a little something about welding, hang out with us. You know, we'd be glad to have you. So, see you next time. Hey, just a quick reminder, the way I support these videos, pay for all my gas and materials and things, is my store at weldmonger.com.